G'day guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Wildcard. Thank you for watching the Wildcard Rugby Show. Like, comment and subscribe. And yes, I am not very happy right now, so I'm gonna try to stay calm and not get too emotional about this. So yes, following the game between Ireland and South Africa last week, my initial raw reaction was the fact that this move here, when Kalen Doris landed on Malcolm Marks, should have been a red card. I was very emotional, I was very angry about this move. And there was a lot of pushback from the comments saying that I was trying to farm clickbait. So yeah, the unfortunate reality of this move is the fact that Malcolm Marks has sustained a fractured leg because of this. And he will be out for six weeks minimum. And to me, this should be a red card with no, no question asked. Because it's very clear to me that he deliberately dropped his weight onto Malcolm Marks. So a number of key areas you can look for. You can see Doris, he's actually got his left hand wrapped under the belly of Malcolm Marks at this point. He launches himself up in the air and he sees the leg and he unbinds from under the belly with his left hand and he hooks it onto his leg and pulls it towards him and he lands on the leg. Say what you want. That is none of this move. The fact that he launches himself upwards. The fact that he grabs onto the legs and pulls it towards himself. None of this warrants an accident. In any sense. So. Yeah. Very disappointed with a lot of the comments. Suggesting that I was clickbait farming. And very, very, even very, very, very disappointed that Malcolm Marks is not going to be able to play here in Australia against the Wallabies. So, yeah. Anyway, moving on. I said I wasn't going to get too emotional, so moving on. The, there were other injuries from the Springbok camp as well. So, Peter the toy is out with injury that's unspecified what it is. There has been another um, broken... Uh, another leg fracture on Franco Mostert. There is a lower leg injury to Cheslin Kobe. And yeah, there's an ankle injury to Edville van der Merwe as well from Curry Cup. And van der Merwe is a guy that might be caught up on the squad. But so he probably wouldn't be... Yeah, he will be an issue because now Malcolm Marks is injured. So that's two hookers down for the Springboks. So yeah, not, not good news out of the Springboks camp. Anyway, let's move on. The... Game itself was actually quite a mar marvel to behold. It was a really, really incredible game. The most impressive part is Kieran Frawley, his drop goals, two drop goals. And he's someone that really, I thought, really, really impressive. He, he missed two drop goals in the Champions Cup final against Toulouse. And he came out, Hank you know, clearly been working on that. And he came out in the biggest stage and delivered that for the Irish. And I thought that was incredibly impressive. And yeah, there was... You know, really not much else to say. That's, you, you you know, under the high pressure, this is the things that you need to do to pull it out. I thought that the Springboks, you know, probably can learn from this as well. They had a number of drop goal attempts during the World Cup and none of it landed during the World Cup. So maybe it's an area they need to re-look really at. You know, it's, it's not the World Cup anymore, but it's a weapon that they really should just, you know, keep on working on it like Frowley has done. When he missed two drop goals, he worked on it and he won the, won the Irish a big match. I think the Springboks should definitely go back and look at a lot of those missed drop goals <laughs> from a lot of different people. You know, Damien Willems <laughs> dropped, missed one. Chesson Kobe missed a couple. Paula missed the one or two as well. So yeah, uh, Springboks definitely has something to learn here from this result. So the news this week is the fact that the Springboks has announced a brand new team pretty much to go against Portugal this weekend. I almost called them Georgia again. It's Portugal. So this will be the time when Springboks try out some new players, bring in some new combinations. And yeah, this will be will be a bit of a bit of a relaxed game <laughs> before heading into the rugby championship. So yeah, let's have a quick look at who's in, who's out, and see what Rassi Rasmus has decided. So two uncapped players. In the four pack already, Jans Hendrik, Vessels, Johan Huebla, Thomas Dutoy will come in at the 
first three positions. Saman Morat will be the captain coming in number four. Achias Neyman number five. Pepsi. Bothelazi comes in at number six. Ben Jacks. Ben Jackson Dixon comes in at number seven. Evan Ruiz coming in at number eight. Number nine, Kobus Reinach. I've been wanting, waiting for him to come back. He's been missing. I've been missing a lot of that speed that he brings into the game. Uh, Kobus Reinach, number nine. Number 10, Man of the Bok. Again, another guy I thought probably could be used potentially at the game against the Irish to just open up the attack a little bit. The, the, the attacking from the Springboks team was really just too flat to spice anything up, but they just really relied on penalties the whole game. So I thought Man of the Bok. Probably could have been a bit of an X factor to bring in for a game like that. Marco Zulo, my pimpy, coming number 11. Andre Esterhazen coming in number 12. Become your arm, returns number 13. That is some serious powerhouse in the center position there. Curdy Adams uh, coming in number 14. His partner with Andre for a while now. And then finally, Afalete Fasi, number 15, once again. On the bench now, Andre Hugo Venter comes in number 17. Number, uh, sorry, number 16, number 17. Ntutoku Nchutnu. Hardest name to pronounce in the world. Number 18, Trevor Nyakani. The big boy returns at number 18. Number 19, Bruan Venter. Number 20, Alray Lowe. Number 21, Mornay van der Berg. And number 22, Sasha van der Ngomazulu. And number 23, Kwan Horn. Not Asian, for some reason. With a name like Kwan, how can he not be Asian? I'm very disappointed. Anyway, moving on. So the rugby world rankings are a little bit shuffling around in the bottom of the ladder. Italy moves up to number nine, pushing Australia down to number eight. Uh, with Wales dropping way below number 10, the points that was gained from beating Wales for the Wallabies wasn't really that much. Japan dropped two positions after losing to Georgia. Oh, let's have a look at the results from the weekend. So... Yeah, there were some pretty incredible results in the weekend. So USA lost to Scotland, 7 points for 42. Canada, 35-22 over Romania. Samoa clutched a wing over Spain, 34 points for 30. Spain is actually, I think, one of the top-ranked teams in the European, like, second division. Like, you know, the, the, the division that's below six nations. Nations Cup, whatever they call it. So it is really well done for Samoa. Another wing under the belt. New Zealand... Obviously, deep beating England in a oh go Bowden performance in the second half, 24 points to 17. Wallabies 36 points to 28 over Wales. Japan losing to Georgia. Oh my goodness, this was embarrassing. So Eddie Jones guy came on and did a judo move with a leg sweep and almost broke one of the Georgian players' leg, sent over the red card, and really just yeah put Japan under the pumps for the remainder of the game. They were looking pretty good when 15 players on the field. Getting a try, early try on the board, but yeah. <laughs> Classic Eddie. Don't really know what he's coaching the players. 35 points to 25. I think they first time they lost to Georgia for a very long time now, actually. Namibia lost to Portugal, 22 points to 37. So Portugal is definitely coming for the spring box. And uh, yeah, uh, also some big games on uh, Sunday. South America, obviously, 24-25 Ireland. Argentina, revenge game 33 points to 25 i watched this game it was like there was like 20 minutes of the game missing due to the broadcasting <laughs> like just blue screen so yeah but it was really good uh performance by the argentinians the french was had a lot of disruption in camp over the week with players posting racist videos and there was some uh yeah some assault charges to a woman in in argentina as well to two of their players who are currently being, um, yeah, being looking at putting into jail as well. Some pretty disruptions there. But a really good performance for Argentina to come back from a pretty embarrassing loss for the week before. Chile, 35 points to 5 over Belgium. And Paraguay lost to Hong Kong, 12 points to 80 in a game of basketball, I assume. So, yes, anyway, moving on. So, yeah, the other big matches this weekend, uh, on the weekend was England versus New Zealand. Once again, the England was looking very, very good. They were leading the All Blacks early in the second half. I think it was four, uh, 17 points to 13. It was looking pretty dire. Like England firmly controlled, only for Bowden Barrett to come onto the field, just completely carved everything up. Just like a day and night, the difference once Bowden came on, it was just absolutely incredible. Still got it. Bowden Barrett might become the uh, Johnny Sexton of the, of the All Blacks. On the way that he looked and yeah it was really really impressive 
and All Blacks again pulled themselves out of the fire to avoid a historic loss at Eden Park. So yeah, really, really, really tight there. So following that game, there were a few changes to the All Blacks camp. Patrick Pulutu has been left at home uh, for the rest of you know Sam Darry has been caught up to go off to face Fiji in America this weekend. There was a lot of you guys said that Darry should probably be considered because he's taller than both of them, like he has quite a bit of height on him. So yeah, good to see that they have made that change there. And also I think Billy Proctor is caught in the group as well. So the initial, you know, report from the All Blacks camp is to give Tui Pelotu a bit of a break. But the lineouts has been pretty terrible for the All Blacks, to be honest. So something had to be done. For the English now, one of their biggest, most Im impressive fact of their performance was their defense. And their defensive coach, Kevin Singfield, has ended his contract with England. So there were some talks that they wanted to keep him as a part-timer in the England camp. So that'll be a pretty big, uh, big, 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 you know, big call to, to retain for the English camp. Now, moving on to some, uh, some infamous quotes from Eddie Jones. So, yeah, so... Obviously, Eddie Jones has excuses after losing the game, big games on the weekends. So here are just some stuff that, you know, <laughs> you can change to a different team, but the rhetoric stays the same, right? So some quotes from, from Eddie on the weekend. We've got to learn some tough lessons. Test match rugby is about being accurate in those big moments. And what is, and that is where we need to improve. The frustrating thing for me is how we work for our points and just how easy we concede the points. I have been clear all I have been clear all along that we probably need to go through a little bit of pain <laughs> while we are in that process of those players getting some more experience. Classic. And then finally, with, with, with regarding to one of his own players, he's a winner. Very competitive. We have lots of things to learn, but they have been a fantastic group. Yeah. Same rhetoric and uh, just a joke, by the way. That was a test, guys. If you thought that was Eddie Jones, you were wrong. That was actually Warren Gallen. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> if you thought that was Eddie Jones speaking, you were completely wrong. That was Warren Gatlin. That was quoting from Warren Gatlin. I'm just playing a little game with you. <laughs> so, yeah, Warren Gallen learning from the best Eddie Jones after losing to the Wallabies. And I thought it was really surprising. You know, he talks about all this rebuilding and all that sort of stuff. He's looking at potentially going to 10th loss in a row. And yeah, it's just uh, just really disappointing how he left four key players at home for them to take a break and to come out and say this sort of stuff like, oh, you know, been clear all along. We probably need to go through a little bit of pain while we are in that process of those players getting some more experience, right? That is a classic Eddie Jones quote. And uh, yeah, some of you guys are actually calling for his head in the comments, but hey, I am not a Welsh, so, you know, I I'm not Welsh, so it's not my business. So Rhys Webb, another Welsh player, has been suspended for four years for, uh, for using steroids in France. Another Welsh player, Rhys Patchell has moved to Japan for the Monopoly money. He signed with the Green Rockets to play under former Welsh coach Wang Pivak. And so obviously Fiji is playing the All Blacks this weekend in, in the United States. So there were some really big traveling issues. A lot of their players had to apparently fly back to Fiji from, uh, from Europe and then, uh, and then go to get a visa, then go back to America. So a lot of these guys had to do like a very big trip around to get to U USA and yeah it's not gonna be it's not gonna be a pleasant game against the all blacks when you're jet lagged let's just say the least and finally let's talk about yes let's talk about the uh this one first so james o'connor will be coming out to play you know uh, against wales this weekend there's, there's gonna be a, a game between the reds and wales so yeah it's good to see the veteran coming back for a bit of a last showing he's off contract now he's been like all and out due to injuries and whatnot but uh, yeah, good to see him probably do a one last hurrah this week. And finally, Richie Muonga was caught into the Blues camp and the State of Origin just ended. The Blues has upset the, the Queenslanders in, at, in, in Queensland at Lane Park. And I, you know, the fact that 
I saw this news after the game was that I thought a lot of the moves that the the, 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 the two of the tries that the Blues scored really looked like something that Richie Mwanga liked to do where you show the ball and then you go yourself, right? And that's something that really worked for the Blues. So, you know, I actually have no doubt that his influence in the Blues camp has yielded a great results for the Blues tonight. So, yeah. And that's the final bit of news, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. I will be doing some previews before the weekend's matches. But, uh, yeah. So, definitely we'll do the reviews. But, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. See you guys later. Cheers.